Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of February 17, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. It is certainly one of the busiest astrological weeks that I have seen in quite a while. We've got lots of activity happening with Venus and with Mercury. The beginning, the very beginning of Mercury retrograde season happens now. It had to come. Here we are plus a full moon. But first, I want to tell you about a beautiful connection that takes place early in the week between the sun and Uranus. The sun will be in the sign of Aquarius and will reach out to its ruling planet of Uranus. Now, this to me is an energy of possibility, of luck, certainly, and of quick turnarounds, a sense of synchronicity, allowing things to change in a way that we like very much. Now, the type of conversation that is taking place here is one that astrologers call a sextile, and it is considered an easy connection, uh, but it's one where you have a lot of control, you have a lot of power. It's more like you're given keys or shown the way, you're pointed in a particular direction, and by honoring that direction, by trusting yourself, by putting in a little bit of time, you're able to reap reward. It's very beneficial because what is good about this conversation is that it is not what astrologers call a trine, which is also easy energy, but it's a little bit too easy. It's just blessings and it's the faith that blessings will show up, which is a really nice uh, emotion and state of being to be in, but it doesn't give us a whole lot of power like sextiles do. And so it is going to be this energy that encourages us and shows us that things can improve rather quickly, but also encourages us to put in a little bit of effort, thereby being able to own the results that we reap. Shortly after this conversation perfects, which happens right around Sunday or Monday, depending on where you are on the planet, the sun will change signs and move into the sign of Pisces. So happy birthday to all the Pisces out there. We are beginning Pisces season and it will start immediately with a full moon. Now this full moon happens right around Tuesday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. And this is a full moon in the sign of Virgo. It is a full moon that is happening at the very beginning of its sign, what astrologers call zero degrees. Now, any given full moon brings with it a sense of completion, things coming full circle, a sense of fruition, and it tends to represent a time when we are able to recognize our own emotional truth. Sometimes it's a truth that we haven't wanted to look at before, but now it's there and we can't help but acknowledge it. The difference is because this full moon is happening at the very beginning of its sign with this sense of completion and closure also comes a beginning. In fact, the fruition that we're seeking, we are doing so because we believe that it will allow us to begin again in some key way. And I feel as I look at this happening in the sign of Virgo, there's a, a very practical nature to this energy. It's very grounded, certainly, but it's also interested in the details of any given matter. And it's able to look at things from a variety of perspectives. That is the strength of the Virgo energy. Now, this is also why uh, sometimes, you know, every uh, sign has its light side and its dark side, as we like to call it. And in the light side, yes, it looks at things from a variety of angles and is able to appreciate complexity. But on the other side, it's overthinking. It's an energy of looking too much at too many details. Well, the great thing is, is at least with a full moon, we're able to hone in, we're able to focus on that one element, that one angle that's going to matter to us most. And it is that one angle when seen from the perspective of heart, from the perspective of emotion that clarifies so much of what it is that we are truly wanting going forward from here. Now, what's also interesting is that we are going to have a very active Mercury this week. Mercury is the ruling planet of this full moon. So there's this sense of where it is that we are about to undertake a journey thanks to Mercury retrograde season. Well, wherever that is for us, there's a sense of emotional awareness, a, a heightened sense of involvement with where it is that we now 
are going to start to consider things and then reconsider. There's a natural connection playing out. And actually, what is interesting is that Mercury is moving through the opposite sign of Virgo, which is the sign of Pisces. Now, two signs on opposite ends of the zodiac are considered to be along the same spectrum. They mirror each other, but they also complement each other as well. And so it is the ruling planet of the full moon, which is Mercury, in its opposite sign that further fortifies this uh, sense of these two signs being on an extended spectrum and having a natural connection to each other. It is going to be right in the middle of the week, right around Wednesday, that Mercury will enter shadow. So it is important to pay attention to what is happening in your life right around this time and as we move later into the week, because this is where Mercury will return once we get towards the end of March and Mercury has already gone retrograde by then and starts to slow down to a standstill. This is exactly where Mercury is going to return, where Mercury is now. But what is also important is that Mercury will be very active in the sky, making key connections with truly powerful players in the sky. And this is going to be part of an ongoing dance. These conversations are going to be repeated for a second time once Mercury is retrograde and then a third time once Mercury is direct. Now, by far the most notable is the meeting in the sky of Mercury and Neptune. In fact, the shadow period, the beginning of Mercury retrograde season begins with Mercury hand in hand with Neptune. Now, ordinarily, these two planets meeting in the sky can make for not necessarily clear thinking uh, and can make for some confusion as well, some being caught up in illusion and desire and inspiration. The great thing is, though, that simultaneously, we are going to have Mercury connect in harmony with Saturn, which is gonna to help to ground this energy. I feel like this is going to be very beneficial. It's gonna allow us to be connected to that sense of hope for what is possible, but also have an eye on where it is that we can take action to manifest different things in our life, to actually live that more inspired future that we are going to glimpse thanks to Neptune. Now it is Mercury that is going to reach out in harmony with Saturn. And it is the same type of conversation I mentioned earlier, what we call a sextile. And shortly after, as we move towards the end of the week, Mercury will also reach out in harmony, the same type of conversation with Pluto. And what this tells me is that we are being empowered as we move forward. We've had this inspiration. We have this sense of plugging into source, of touching on a spiritual truth in our own life. Now, what are we going to do with it? How is it that it is going to change our lives externally? But also, how is it that it is going to transform us in meaningful ways? Well, the transformation, that is Pluto. That is the blessing of Pluto. And as part of this, there are going to be some signs out there that are making some power move, taking a truly courageous stance, having that connection, having that conversation, taking that action that ends up facilitating changed circumstances. Now it is as we get to the very end of the week that Mercury will reach out and speak in a conversation of tension with Jupiter. This is a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. And it is this conversation that speaks to over-promising or heightened expectations. It can be overconfident as well. And with this sense of over-promising, right, it's not always insincere. Sometimes it's very sincere. We believe that we can make great things happen. However, it is important to distinguish at this time the difference between fear and intuition. So if it is that our fears are being kicked up as we're making these over promises, well, fears are to be healed. Ultimately, they show up because we are ready to look at them and to release them so that we can more fully step into our power. But then there's intuition and intuition is a learned skill. It's yes, we're all born with it, but then as part of living in the world and as part of functioning, we take on other skills as well and sometimes can put intuition on the back burner. We learn to do this when we're very young, but it is as we get older that we start to appreciate the value and the gift and the skill 
that intuition can be. And so this is going to give us an opportunity to start to do that work, to start to distinguish between what is it that our intuition is telling us and what is it that our fears are telling us, to strengthen the intuition, to rely on it, to trust it, and to heal the fears. And so wherever it is that your intuition is saying, you know, hey, slow down a bit, maybe give yourself a little bit more time, Keep in mind, Nadia said, Mercury retrograde season. If you start hearing that, yeah, let's put that to intuition. However, if it is the case that it is your fear, then you can acknowledge that you're gonna get that opportunity to do just that, to heal that. With this, it can also lend itself to other people over-promising us, whether they intend to or not. It can lend itself to, as I said, heightened expectations, seeing what it is that we want rather than what is actually being shown to us. Now, this is the most natural thing. It's the most human thing. But we have that energy there this week, especially in the second half of the week. And it takes some conscious practice to tap into that Saturnian energy, which will then allow us to ground the otherwise very dreamy, caught up in an illusion kind of energy. If we can ground it, then we can actually take what otherwise would be a fantasy and make it real. Now, if all of this wasn't enough, we've also got Venus. I've been mentioning this particular contact. I said, this is coming up very soon. Keep in mind, well, now here we are. It is Venus meeting Saturn in the sky at the very beginning of the week while simultaneously reaching out and speaking in harmony with Neptune. And as we get to the end of the week, it is going to be Venus that meets Pluto in the sky. It is a very important week where it comes to looking at where we are in matters of love, in matters of money, and how we really feel about it. At least early in the week, we have that inspired energy, so we're very hopeful and we're able to, again, with Saturn, ground the energy so that it actually counts for something in our practical reality. Now, Venus and Saturn meeting in and of themselves can indicate an element of restriction, uh, needing to hold back, needing to play it safe. And sometimes there's a phrase that says reality bites. Well, there can be a little bit of that when Venus meets Saturn, but I don't think that's gonna be the case so much, at least not this time, because we have that harmonious connection with Neptune playing out at the same time. So what this tells me is there'll be an inspired vision as well as an understanding of the action we can take to see it through. And we're motivated to actually take that sense of what is possible for us in terms of our prosperity, our emotional prosperity, our spiritual prosperity, what is possible for us in terms of the legacy that we desire to leave. After all, Venus is moving through the sign of Capricorn, a sign that is very interested in matters having to do with legacy and having a goal and seeing it through and achievement and success as we define it for ourselves. But at the same time, it is going to be this wonderful balance of inspiration and groundedness that is going to make sure that we honor the physical realm, that we honor that we are incarnated for a reason, but we don't get down about that, that we're able to balance that with a sense of meaning, a sense of purpose, and a sense of being plugged into source in the best possible sense, and allowing that source to guide and define what it is that we deem worthy of achieving. Now it is as we get to the very end of the week that we are going to have the divine meeting between Venus and Pluto. This energy will be different than the energy of Venus early in the week. We don't have that sweetness and softness of Neptune to balance out what otherwise can be an intense energy. So we are fully in energy that can feel rather overpowering. When Venus and Pluto get together in the sky, it tends to represent a time when we are very all or nothing, where it comes to matters of money, where it comes to matters of love. And it is at this time that we can find ourselves attracting very faded experiences, whether that is being pulled towards a particular person or whether that is feeling as if circumstances have shown up to help us to understand some deep truth about ourselves. Now, a lot of people out there are going to experience this in the context of attraction. Now, just because you're attracted doesn't mean you need to do anything about it. 
It's always up to you to decide what's right for you in light of your unique circumstances. But I'll also add, I remember being taught many, many years ago, some 20 years ago, one of my spiritual mentors, she told me that when you feel that sense of attraction, like your stomach is flipping or your palms are getting sweaty or whatever it is for you that feels like it is being pulled in a particular direction, especially with someone new that you meet, it means that there is a lesson there for you. It doesn't mean you need to do anything about it. It just means that you could learn something if you choose to get in touch with what you feel and why. And that always stuck with me. And just because you're feeling something doesn't mean that other people are, even though, given that it is Venus and Pluto meeting in the sky, a lot of people are gonna be wanting to feel something, and wanting to feel something very deeply. The thing is though that this energy can be a little bit all-consuming so we are going to want to watch our own tendencies that we may have to overthink things or even uh, border on that place of being obsessive about things. That's where we want to be a little bit careful. With Pluto, the lesson and the way to handle Pluto is always surrender. Uh, it is about turning it over, it is about trusting a divine will, especially when it is a Pluto conjunction. It's a little bit different when Pluto is speaking harmoniously with another power player. As I said, we are going to have Mercury speaking harmoniously with Pluto uh, in the late part of the week. That energy is a lot more about you taking action, about you making some power move, power talk, uh, connecting with somebody that you feel in some way, whether it's an exchange of information or whether it is an insight that can transform your circumstances for you for the better. But it's different when it is a conjunction. It's different when a planet is meeting Pluto in the sky. Pluto ends up consuming the energy of that planet. This is Venus, goddess of love, and she has something to say also about prosperity and defining prosperity, about enjoying life, about generosity of spirit and in practical terms as well. And it is going to be at this time that a lot of us are focusing in on essentials and a lot of us are looking at where we've been and how we feel about it and making decisions as to the best course forward for us. And it is about connecting to that sense of the essentials of life, the essentials of what it means to give, to be generous, and what it means to enjoy yourself, what it means to have pleasure, and to get to the root of what it is that ultimately is going to allow us to feel more at ease as we move through the world. But of course, as I said, love can absolutely be part of this very powerful, faded attractions and a sense of all or nothing where it comes to matters of love. And so whether it is someone new that we're meeting now, uh, whether it is that we are getting to know somebody or we're in an established bond, this is gonna represent a time when we truly are understanding what's going on or what we're feeling. And we're deciding, am I all in or not? And if we are not, well, this is the kind of energy where if we feel like what we have or what we've been working towards or what may be starting here isn't real based on some depth of perception that we have at this time, we will be willing to go in a different direction. But it is also an energy that says, if we feel that what is here is real, we will commit that much more deeply on a level of soul and psyche. What I love about this week for us is that it is so busy. And what that means is activity. And what that means is learning and lessons and developments. We've got this wonderful mix of energy this week. Heightened emotion, thanks to the full moon. So we're getting in touch with our truth. And then all that Saturn and Pluto can also be a lot about truth as well. But that Pluto says that we are going to feel things. We're going to be feeling things very deeply indeed. And in the midst of all that we're feeling, we are going to uncover something real about ourselves and about where it is that we desire meaningful change. And that may raise some fears on our part. It's not easy. It takes a lot of bravery to acknowledge where it is that we are ready to change. But the great thing is, is that we truly are ready. And the changes that are transpiring now are ones that will certainly lead us towards a greater sense of contentment within, 
but also a greater sense of authenticity in all that we do. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? What are you excited about? Please let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. It's so much fun. And I love knowing what it is that you are excited about in the period ahead. So again, comment below. What do you love about this week? And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, you can log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I also want to send a special thank you to our sponsor for this video, Ka Gold Jewelry, K-A Gold Jewelry. Uh, they are a phenomenal business to work with. I appreciate them partnering with me so much. They make incredible jewelry, sacred jewelry, talismans, including astrological jewelry as well. Please do use the link in the description below and you can log on to their website and see what it is that they have. I have been a fan of theirs for many, many years, and I'm really very excited. I placed my first order. I'm very excited about my order coming in very soon. And you can see what they have and what it is that resonates with you and why, because all of the jewelry is so powerful, but also deeply personal and created at fortunate astrological times. Well, I'm sure that there's something there that you feel drawn to, that you feel called to. And even if you just want to look at beautiful jewelry, you can check out their website in the link below, kagoldjewelry.com. I have an all new Synchronicity University special series coming up Saturdays in the month of March. I hope that you will join me. This is a series that is very near and dear to my heart. I have been looking at the sky playing out right now and looking at the sky coming up in 2020. And I feel like a lot of us are going to be going through very powerful, if not overwhelming change and transformations. There's going to be an evolution that may sometimes not feel easy for a lot of people out there. And to respond to this, I am going to be launching all kinds of new things and new endeavors in the weeks and months ahead. So the first one that I have launched is uh, this special series that will take place Saturdays in the month of March, coming up very soon. You can purchase a single class, you can purchase all the classes, uh, but this is uh, really to help people to move towards greater hope and joy in difficult times. So whether it is for you that you wanna understand how to move through and empower yourself during challenging times, or whether it is that you will use astrology to help others, to move through challenging times, especially considering the very intense sky that we have coming up this year and next. Well, it is this series that I hope will help a lot of people out there. The classes I will be teaching include Faith and Fortitude, which is all about understanding the chart to fortify and to strengthen and understand a personal relationship that you have with a higher power as you define it and as you understand it. Another class that I'll be teaching has to do with changing bonds and transforming difficult relationships. Uh, another has to do with moving through challenging times where we have difficult transits that take place in a chart and how to approach them and how to move through them in a way that moves you towards greater love and greater wisdom. And finally, the fourth class will have to do with forgiveness, a time to be free is what it's called. And it is about using the astrology chart to understand how it is that you can move yourself towards a space of forgiveness and the freedom that that allows. And so again, I truly do believe in these classes very much. I feel like they're gonna help a lot of people out there. And so I hope that you will join me. Again, check out the links in the description below and you can sign up again for an individual class that calls you or you can get a discount on a, a rate for all four classes. There is an early bird discount as well, which I believe lasts until the end of this week. So if you want an even bigger discount, please do log on. Uh, and have a look and register. I look forward to meeting you in class. If you can't join us live, no worries. There will be a replay that you can learn from endlessly. 
Now also in-person events coming up as well. And the first event in alignment with this intention that I have to bring hope and joy uh, during times of transition and during challenging times. It is uh, an event that I am participating in and it is a cruise event. Now, recently I had the privilege of being part of a special guest uh, at an event here in Mexico where people came from around the world to spend 10 days here in Mexico led by uh, the amazing world-renowned astrologer Maurice Fernandez. I was very honored to be there. And I saw firsthand how it is that people immersed in a different environment, uh, being brought together from all over the world, how karmic those bonds are, and how it is that being out of your comfort zone, being in this new space, uh, surrounded by water, and how powerful it is to be immersed and surrounded by water, and how it facilitates an experience that changes lives and can truly put a life on a whole other, more empowered, more spiritually aware path. And it is part of that intention that I'm going to be part of this cruise event. Now you can find details in the link below. There are a lot of renowned astrologers and spiritual teachers who are going to be part of this event. Uh, the tuition is only something like $250. Uh, the rate per person in terms of the cabin is really low as well. Uh, it's really one of the cheapest rates you're ever going to get on a cruise ship. And so please do have a look at that. Uh, and you can go onto my website and have a look at the details there. And if you have any questions, if you want to attend and you have any questions, please use the contact form on my website. Uh, we're happy to communicate with you to answer any questions. If it is that the registration fee is a little high and you need a partial scholarship for that, I am totally willing to do that. Just keep in mind, I have absolutely no control over the travel costs, over the cruise costs, but where it comes to my part, where it has to do with actually registering for the classes to be part of the event, uh, I can offer partial scholarships in that regard, but I really do hope that as many people as possible are able to attend because I feel so strongly that this is going to be an important event for a whole lot of people out there. We'll be spending evenings observing the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto. In fact, this cruise is taking place in the middle of January under the exact conjunction of these two planets. And this is a powerful symbol of change and of uh, a sense of a brand new beginning that's happening, a new phase of humanity, a new power for humanity that is going to start to arise. And I do feel that to be there and to be part of this very powerful energy together uh, is going to allow us to then tap into an understanding of how we can help other people uh, to move in a more hopeful direction in these times of very powerful change. So again, whether you're curious, you just wanna learn more about it, uh, you feel inspired to actually wanna take steps to make it real for you, don't limit your vision. That's one thing I remember learning long ago. I remember once I took a short class with uh, the people who work with Iyanla von Zant, and I uh, did that one evening years ago, and that was the one thing that stood out in that workshop that I did over one night, which was don't limit your vision. If you're meant to do something, it has a way of coming together. And I realized that in my own life, with my education, uh, it's an amazing thing. If you're meant to do something, it comes together in remarkable ways. And so please don't limit your vision, learn more and reach out if it is that there's anything we can do to make that vision more of a reality for you. Now also I am gonna be teaching with NCGR ncgr.org is going to have uh, a day filled with classes focusing on relationships. It is going to be the first Sunday of March and I am going to be one of the teachers there. You can sign up for one class, you can sign up for all three. They've got renowned teachers who are gonna be teaching as well on the same day. Very honored to be part of that. And I will be talking about uh, relationships and how to look at when uh, a relationship is going to come and what type of relationship it is going to be. So 
please do have a look at that as well in the description below. Finally, I have a bunch of live events coming up in May. I will be in Vancouver and in Seattle with the NORWAC conference there. And Labor Day weekend, I will be back in Baltimore with NCGR as well. And there are other talks that are in the works that uh, can transpire very soon. And so be on the lookout for that. I may be coming to a location near you. If you have an astrology group anywhere in the world and you would like to host an event with with me reach out use the contact form on my website and we can make that happen as well thank you so much thank you for your trust and i hope that you navigate this week well there are such a variety of energies that i feel like for all of us yes there are going to be some strong emotions playing out but at the same time there's tremendous potential here to experience quick and positive change and to be inspired in ways that lift you and stay with you for a long time to come. I hope you enjoy it. Well, thank you again. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.